Welcome, coaches. How are y'all doing this fine evening? Uh, I hope everyone is doing safe. You've you've you got your favorite coffee. I had to do mine. We my boy just went to sleep, so that's why we're going a little bit uh, later on. I'm here with Coach Ata uh, Gower. Coach, I appreciate you being here with me. We're going to be talking about uh, defense, man, and I want to know the ins and outs of a defensive guru like yourself. Spill your beans. Tell us every all your secrets. But for those coaches that don't know who you are, could you tell us a little bit about your background? Background. Oh, man, I, I'm a coach's kid, first off. Uh, born and raised in Oklahoma. Um, play, you know, uh, played at Ada High School in Oklahoma. Played Division II football in, in, at East Central Oklahoma. Um, was, a, was a GA at, you know, fresh out of college. I was fortunate enough to be a graduate assistant at Henderson State University in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Uh, you know, some of the best two years of my life, um, lived, I mean, literally lived in the office for six months of it. Um, and, and you know, that was, that was my address. Um, so that, that's, we can talk about all that later if you want to, um, been, you know, been, been mostly, uh, in Oklahoma, been, you know, broken arrow was a defense coordinator at Norman North for, for, um, for a little bit. Uh, and then this past I'm going on a year now. Uh, became a defense coordinator at Princeton, Texas. Uh, it's the northeast, northeast side of DFW. We're we're kind of a suburb. But if you're familiar with Dallas, on, on the McKinney, kind of the Allen McKinney side, um, and, and uh, it's a good place, man. Very fortunate. I'm, I'm our head track coach too, and, and very fortunate, very blessed to be to be where I'm at. Uh, we've got a good staff, good people, good kids. Uh, we are bursting, man. We are bursting to seams right now with kids. Um, right, right now, currently, you know, we're going to graduate about 350 seniors. Um, there's going on about 600 eighth graders on the way right now. So um, we are, yeah, we are blowing up. Um, we, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy right now, but it's, it's a good kind of crazy. So anyway, um, that's kind of my spiel. Like I said, I've coached kid, uh, you know, uh, married my wife, Natalie, and, and have one son who's 15 months old. He's in bed right now. So uh, life is good. Very, very blessed. Very, very lucky to be in the position I am. All right. Now, I'll, I'm always curious about jumps up from Oklahoma to Dallas, Texas. Uh, how did that happen? How, how did you go from one state to another? Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I, I was in Norman, I was in Norman, Oklahoma. Um, you know, I was DC at Norman North high school and, and, uh, our son. So it's a backstory to the backstory. Our son <laughs> had just been born in February. Um, our, our first, you know, our first, and, um, he was two months old and, uh, in April, you know, he's two months old. Um, I kind of get this, this contact, this, this phone call kind of out of the blue. Um, and it, you know, it's the head coach at, at Prince of Texas. And, and we kind of, we didn't know each other, but we had a connection. So we knew a guy and it kind of just, you know, how coaching network works out that they had a you know defense coordinator job open. And, um, you know, at the time I was, you know, like I said, our, our son's two months old. I had a good, yeah. I mean, we had a house. I mean, it, I had a good get, you know, and so um, Coach Coach Surratt calls and says, "Hey, you know, we come to interview." And, and you know, when you go to a place and it just kind of feels right, you know. And, and we went to the interview, went through the process, and, and it just it felt good from from, from the start. And so uh, I took it and called my wife, you know, on the way home and said, "Hey, guess what? I know we got a two month old, but." Uh, you know, and, and, and for both of us, you know, we'd really never been out of Oklahoma. I mean, we're, you know, we're both born and raised Oklahoma. Besides those two years I was in Arkansas, we, we'd been in Oklahoma. We didn't know anything else. Um, and so, you know, through the coaching network and through, I know this guy, and he knows that guy, and, and just kind of how it all meshed together. And, and then meeting and interviewing, you know, and, and getting together, it just, it worked. And uh, I was driving down. I was burning the road up, man. Let me tell you, I, I would I would drive down on Monday morning about four thirty in the morning from Norman, um, and and go spring ball, go spring ball Monday and Tuesday, drive back home, teach Wednesday, Thursday, and then leave again on Friday. And luckily, I was staying with some coach, you know, couch surfing with some coaches. And that's for another long story. But anyway, so, how, how long was the drive? Man, I the best I ever did was about two forty five. Ooh. Um, yeah, and so um, it was, you know, it, and it's it's on the it's also it's on the northeast side. So like if you're, you know familiar with with I thirty five, you know you got to go 
you know, through the Red River, right, the Oklahoma Texas border, and keep going about another, oh, I don't know, couple minutes, and then you got to go east, and then you got to go back south. So it's kind of there's not really a good way to get there driving. Um, and so I was, man, I was burning the road and burning the gas, but I could not wait to get down here. And then finally, um, we finally moved down here in June. Um, and it's, you know, it, it was meant to be because we, we uh, closed our Oklahoma house at 10 a.m. in the morning. We sold our house, mm-hmm. got full, I mean, full ass price. It, it just, it just worked. And so we closed in the morning and we drive down to Dallas to sign off our new house the same day. Wow. So, so we turned in the keys at one house at 10 a.m. And then we got the keys to a new house at about oh, three, four o'clock in the afternoon and moved in all that night. And it, it just, it kind of clicked. So I'll tell you what, you need to, we need to get you back on to talk about how you sweet talk your wife into moving <laughs> states with a newborn and all that. Cause uh, I need to know your secrets and you can let me hold your crown there, King. I mean, there, there was a couple, um, Oh, there's some stuff that I, I that we can say kind of off there, how it all kind of works. So let's put it that way, you know. That honey do list makes sense now. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> see, you guys who are listening right now, you don't know anything about the honey do list right now. Our backyard is uh, interesting right now to say that. So, uh, but no, man, it's uh, uh, it's good. Very blessed. Very lucky. It's it's been a great. Uh, it's been great to be down here for this year. And, and you know, the, the great thing, and I've, I've told some people this, you know, when we, we, uh, you know, when I was going through the interview process, you know, talking about just what school offers and, you know, and, and they, Princeton, it's a great place. And again, we're bursting and blowing up the scenes, but one of the best deals is my son gets to go to school employee daycare. Oh, wow. And, and it is, I can get from my office to his school in 30 seconds. You know, barring natural disaster, obviously, you know, you never want, but I can get to his, to his daycare in under a minute. That is, that is nice. So it's, uh, it's great. And and my, um, you know, my wife, she's able to work from home. Um, so it's, and there's lots of other great things I go on and on, but you got, you know, I want to talk defense, but there's so many unbelievable things I can say about this community being in the Dallas Metroplex, um, it's just, you know, we could do that later, but it's, it's great. So, okay. Well, uh, first off, thank you for making me jealous because my job is nothing like that. And second, let's dive into defense. Um, what is your defensive philosophy when it comes to what you do? Yeah. You know, with, with how the game, well, say with how the game, you know, and I talked to you about this five minutes ago, what we see is 10, 11, 20 gun. You know, we, we don't see veer. We don't see flex bone. We don't see dead T. We don't see double tie die. I mean, you know, it, in our district currently nine games out of 10, it's 10, 11, 20 empty. You know, the one game is, is wing T. Obviously that's, that's, you know, traditional old school wing T and that, you know, that makes all you make you stay up at night. But like, so I say, I say that to say this, you know, we're a three, four defense. Um, and, and I, I believe in, in, a, in a three down front um, because, you know, n- number one, you can drop eight at any time. You know, and, and I've been in a four man front. I, I, when I was at Henderson, we're four man front. When I was at Broken Arrow, we were four man front. Um, you know, a lot of Stoops, Polini, Venables terminology stuff over Pirate Tampa. Um, and it, it was always one of those deals of how do we cancel that gap? You know, you're in a shade three. You know, if we're, if we're in a two by two set and you're trying to overhang, how are you going to cancel gaps? And, and so when we went to the 3-4 in 2015, really sold out to it. I was in Oklahoma. The 3-4 gave you so much flexibility of drop eight, of what of the four linebackers is going to rush. You, you know, what, is it one of the two outside backers, one of the two inside back, backers? Um, you know, another thing that we learned is, is how many three-by-one checks you can have with that eight dropper, that, that jack, that boundary outside linebacker. So philosophy-wise, man – um, you know, we're an odd front structure that can bring you know, four or five at any time, but you don't know where they're coming from. You know, when you talk four down front, in my opinion, you know, you've got your five, your three, your shade, your five. And I know they can loop and twist and stun. I know they can do all that stuff. I get it. But when you're in a five, three, shade, five, you're telling the offense, hey, here's the bubble. Yeah. 
you know, and we hey, we're in a form, we can get in a format. So so I don't want to be a hypocrite here because we play a format. I mean a true over under front, okay? But I also think there's times where it's like you're giving the offense like, hey, here's a shade five, here's the bubble. You know, you're making that overhang fall in somehow. Right, or he is having to tell the five technique to rip under. So, with a three four, we're playing four eyes. You know, those gaps, those B's and A's are already kind of covered. I I hate four. I don't I don't understand why more coaches don't run odd front four eyes. I just don't. I I don't get it because that is what keeps me up at night on the offensive side of the ball. Well, and there there again with every four three four two three stack three four. There's pros and there's cons to, to mm-hmm. everything. You know. Pros to air raid, cons to air raid, pros to flex bone, cons to their flex bone. I mean, there's there's pros and cons to everything, you know, philosophically in offense and defense. Um, but it's stuff that 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 I've loved, that guys have been around have loved, that we've had success with. Um, when I was in Oklahoma, you know, we played for the state championship and, and the highest classification in Oklahoma playing for us. And and we found out some stuff that hey, we really like it. And we found some stuff that, ooh, hope we don't get exploited there. You know, and, and so um, it, it's different. You know, it is different. It's again not your four two four three where you're gapped out. The mic's the A, the wheels the B, ready to go. You know, it is it is different, both defensively, but I think it is offensively. I think it breaks some rules structure wise offensively. And I've never called offense. I've never coached a line, but I think it you know versus a five and a three and a shade and a five. I think okay, or you know that's how you block inside zone. Yeah. Or now it's like you know that's how you pull the guard. You know, you block back the five. Or the tackle, you're going to wrap the guard. Well, here it's like you got four eyes, zero, four eye. We see so much dart or so much you know, tackle pull. Like people are afraid to try to scoop that four eye with the tackle and they pull the guard. And you can do that. And sometimes, hey, I've got clips of, of, of the offense being able to scoop it, right? But so many times people advantage call it or, you know, block back the guard and the tackle folds mm-hmm. you know, or wraps or whatever. And for my philosophy, I like that when one more guard or one more tackle, excuse me, one more O lineman is pulling all the way to the C gap. Like to me, I like that geometry. You know, why is that? Well, because think about it. Okay, if you're in a shade front, if you're in a shade three front, right? And you run fold, mm-hmm. right? So you block out the shade, you block out the three, and the guard wraps, you know, the guard wraps up into the A, right? Okay, here's the next deal. If it's two by two, you know, twins right, twins left on both sides. Okay, who's your mic? Who's you gonna box your spill to? You know what I'm saying? Okay, that A gap is going to get real big because you're going to block the center on the shade, you're going to block the guard on the three. Okay, are you going to make an overhang come fall in or fill in? That's again goes back to the you better learn how to pirate the front, you better learn how to stunt the front and the four down. Um, where, you know, think about it that that kid took two steps backwards and now he's up the field on our mic. Whereas playing four eyes, same formation, two by two, and you're, you want to run some type of, of gap scheme or, or pull game, whatever you want to call it. Now, like, coach, you're going to pull the guard. Okay, how are you going to block that backside four? Are you going to go back with the center and there's nobody for the backside linebacker? Or are you going to try to cut off that four eye and ask that tackle all night long? You got to cover four eye, cover four eye, cover four eye. That's not going to happen 100% of the time. No, it's not. not. No. Or are you going to advantage call it, block out the guard on four eye, make the tackle go all the way to the C gap, <coughs> right? So when it comes to, you know, geometry and angles and, and thinking about how long it takes a left tackle to pull all the way to the right C gap. Okay. Um, I like that, that a lot better because the ball's bouncing versus it's downhill a versus a four, three, you know, a four down front. So yes. I like that because also how often do you see tackles pulling at least in, I'm probably in, in Texas a lot because you know, y'all are like triple a baseball down there but everywhere else you don't you don't see that many tackles pull well and that's the deal even you know i've been down here one year but even when i was in oklahoma you know and playing against broken arrow and owasso and and um tulsa union you know those those big 6a high schools in oklahoma is it was always a mystery on saturday and sunday how you know you're preparing for them how are they going to block this Mm -hmm. and you know and i like when they have to go in on saturday and sunday and say the same thing dang we got to break our rules here you know, how we block, you know, we can't, I don't feel good about running power, whatever, gut power, whatever everybody calls it, the, the guard wrap, right? That way, you know, now we have to block back on it. Well, they broke their rules. Like, they got an advantage call. And I'm not sure how many OCs are out there going, dang, we got to pull the left tackle all the way to the C gap around, Yeah. you know? And so, 
uh, again from a four from a four I standpoint, that really makes sense to me. And then playing his head zero, you know, you're you, that that center. Okay, he's going to get somehow, some way, he's going to get hands on by the nose. You know what I'm saying? The only way I say the only way, what's very, very difficult, I'll be honest with playing zero, is if that if that center goes back to the four eye right now, if he's flat back, you know. But now what happens is the guard who down blocks him two or back blocks him, whatever you want to say, it happens now, right? And so when that center goes back on the four eye and the guard goes down, well, that's telling me there's no one for the backside linebacker. And so, it, to me, th that's a win for us because they can't block the two inside backers in the box. Okay, I I, I like that. I came I'll come from the defensive side first before offense. Uh, you said you were a four man front, and then you switched. Was there a certain game or a certain thing that happened that you went, man, screw the four front, the the major and an even? We're going odd now, and we're going to live yeah. with that. Yeah, you know, here was the deal is, is like I said, you know, I was at Henderson, I was a GA and coach secondary, and we were four three quarters, you know, and now I got to go, now with Rope Nero, coach secondary, and was, you know, four three quarters. And so for four years, you know, I found the, the, <coughs> the, the love and hate of a four down, you know, uh, there's lots of great things about playing four down. I mean, you got five techniques on both sides, you got both edges secure, you know, um, the, the 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 con or the the hate I guess of it was people running running full scheme running power scheme you know running running pull game up in the A gap up in the B gap knowing where the bubble was like well we can combat that by running loops and stunts and twists and all that other are you gonna live in that all night because you're gonna get gassed eventually you may you may live in it and it may be awesome for you in the first half eventually then you're going to loop it, you're going to stun it, and there's going to be a six-inch seam that that guy's going to take it for six points. And I hated – you know, we were 4-3. We always had to figure out how to cancel the gap, you know, how to cancel the A, how to cancel the B, because the overhang Sam or Will linebacker was too far, and he'd have to say, hey, pirate, pirate, or, or you know, pop, pop, or whatever the term was for us to cancel the A gap because he couldn't get to it. You know okay. what I'm saying? Or the B gap, you know? And so, um, and, and that's another thing. It's like, you know, on a four, three, okay. When people get in trips and you, let's say, let's say you set the shit, I'm sorry, you set the three, five, whether it be to the back of the field. So let's say it's like trips plus, right? So the backs of the trips. Okay. So it's three, five. So your mic, your mic's going to bot, you know, what we call boss, back over strong. The mic's going to overhang three. The wheels of the A gap player. Well, who's the B gap player weak? It's got to be that free safety from yeah. seven, eight yards. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, like, for us, like, you know, when that happens, we use the free safety as a bonus player to trips. A whole a whole lot, nine, 90 times out of 100. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we're going to use that free safety as a bonus guy because, again, you're playing, you know, from weak to strong, weak side, you got a jack and a C gap, an end and a four eye, a nose in one of the A's, the wheels in the other A, the four I's in the B, and the mics in the C gap. Right? Okay. And so that free safety who's hanging, you know, weak or on the X side away from trips, he's your seventh. He doesn't have a primary gap, unlike the four three. Right. And those are the guy, you know, and I know guys are like, well, we'll play three over three and play cover three. And I'm like, if you can play three over three all night, more power to you. Okay. But you know, you've got to get to where you're playing the corner, the Sam, the strong, and the Mike four over their trips. If not, their people are going to throw three stick on you all night. And so um, that's, and that's not, you know, how do you want to do it? it okay. Let's so say you set the shade five to the field mm -hmm. and have a mic got to fall in the B gap. Right now, now let's say that people run like power, you know, they, so the three's back door. So they're going to go back on the three with the center down on the shade of the guard, lock out the five technique of the tackle, right? They run power or whatever, guard pull up to the big gap. Okay, there's no one to block the wheel. I'll give you that. But the mic is way out there. He's your box player. You know what I'm saying? And then you're throwing off at him because he's triggering the B gap. And here comes the RPO game. Because people offense, you know, offense has gotten really good about throwing off your overhand, throwing off yeah. who your trigger guy is. You know, who's the falling guy? And so they've got you. Right. So that's again why in four down front, you know, you set the three five to the field or to the back or whatever. Okay, the mic's out, he doesn't have a gap. 
but now you're making your free safety, the eight-yard free safety, be the big yeah player week. If you don't stun it, if you don't rip it, if you, you know, how do you want to do it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was one of the reasons of why from the secondary standpoint, I coach our safeties and we did it. Hey, we, we would make tackles for zero yard gains with that free safety. Okay. That's impressive. Um, in the B gap. Well, here's what else we did. You know, we played so much people called stubby lock special, whatever it was, you know, so the free safety didn't have to carry three vertical like he does in poach. So the free safety came down and he, you know, he was our plot, our, six or seven depending on how you looked at it because we took the mic out we strung it you know the mic strung out the wheels mm-hmm. the yeah player we used the free safety down so he could be like a boxer he could be like a backer down there because he didn't have to carry three vertical right but we still have the illusion hey you can't throw that number one guy going to ou going to osu going to <laughs> Arsenal. you know what i mean and, and so um coaching secondary in that four three so I don't mean a soapbox here, but that was one of the problems that we had. Then, I, so I took a DC job, my first DC job at 25 years old, um, at a small small school in Oklahoma, outside Oklahoma City, not too far. And and I went to the high school, you know, and we had three down line. I mean, we did, we had a plethora of those 5'10", 170 pound outside backer guys, and so all law came the three four. And so I'm trying to figure out on the fly how to play a three, four. And you talk about, I'll be honest with you, shooting darts at the board some nights. Um, and then after that season going into 15, we sold out to it. So this is who we are. This is what we're going to do. So in 15, when we sold out to playing four eyes um, and, and have evolved ever since. So you said I've only got an hour. I could spend a, a day on that. So um, about why the four, three versus three, four. So anyway, did the of, kids like the adjust, the change where they're like, heck yes, I get behind it. Or was there a little bit of pushback? Like, Hey, I like the four, three. Why are we going to the three, four? Well, so, so here's the deal. So when I left broken arrow, you know, we we're four, three, and then I went to total. So, and it was new staff, um, you know, came in with new head coach came in, you know, I came in with him. And so, um, you know, it was a new regime, or was a new, okay. you know, and so there was no pushback. It was, I had taken my philosophy from the four three, and I didn't trash it. I didn't fold it by any means, but it was more of our personnel said we got to be a three four. Number one, number two, schematically, I was like, you know, it just it just it fit our kids better, okay, and and it allowed us to always bring a fourth. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you yeah. set the five, three, the shade, the five again, right? So they can loop, twist, stunt, and all, do all that stuff, okay? But I always like the illusion of what of the four backers you're gonna, are going to bliss. Is it going to be one of them? Is it going to be two of them? Is it going to be six-man pressure? You know what I mean? So so for, for me, I always liked that idea of what pressure we're going to bring. And two, when we do drop eight, how are we going to drop it? Drop eight, cover three, drop eight, Tampa, drop eight quarters, it, you know? And so there was always that variations. And that's another thing. When people got three by one and that X receiver is really, really good playing secondary. I couldn't leave the corner out on an island all night. We had to find a way to either walk the Jack out there or boundary outside linebacker or play the, play, play the free safety on top or underneath, you know? Um, so there wasn't any pushback because you know, our kids were new. They didn't know any different. Yeah. I got you. But I fell in love with it, and it just really changed the way I look at things. And again, hey, I'm not dogging four three, four down, three stop. Trust me, I'm not. I, I love a four three, but I do think there are some issues and problems. And people say the same thing. Well, there's issues and problems with playing four I. No doubt, absolutely there is. Um, but I think again, it's about how you teach it, how you learn it, how you coach it, how you study it. Um, and and you know, like you even you said from an offense perspective five minutes ago, I like that. I, I'd like honestly going against an even front than I do an odd. I rank them as what I like to go against even, you know, right? Uh, odd where I know that that they're five zero five, and sure. I know that, and then the four. I, I hate four eyes. Like I, I despise them. So here's here's the thing, okay? And this is this is just my humble opinion. And again, we play a four down, so disclaimer, okay? When we do play four down, okay, and here's another thing. When offensive guys I love on Twitter, when people drop, you know. The perfect play against the the perfect defense. Nine times out of ten, guess what they draw? An even front too high. Bingo. Yep. They draw an even front too high because they know where the shade five is going to be. 
Yep. Right. Meaning, meaning they may not know it's going to be shade five to the back or away from the back, but they know they're going to get a shade five. They know they're going to get a five, three shade five. Yeah. And they can dictate where they want to flop the back or how they want to run again, what guard's going to pull. Right. Okay. And, and that's the thing. It's also like people are, you know, you talk about like stringing the fits or pushing the fits, you know, people are figuring out who your next defender is. Okay. And trying to uh, get the three technique where they want it. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't want to play that game in high school football. I want to set the four eyes, zero, four eye. Do we play a four eye shade five? Absolutely. Do we play a five shade four eye? Absolutely. Okay. But when you play a four eye zero four eye, how many bubbles are there? Zero. You're right. Right. You're right. So, I, I I mean you're speak you're speaking my language because from a defensive guy, like I came up all defense. It wasn't until I'm one of the weird ones where I was all defense and then I was too slow to play offense. I loved offense, but you know too fat and slow i just it seems to simplify things for the defense you are now dictating what the offense can and can't do based on your front instead of the other way around sure and and that's you know again hey you know again disclaimer you know it is is been fortunate enough to have lots of shutouts and also been fortunate enough to to learn not how to give up 50 some nights you know so um and i think it's guys like that who are humble enough to admit it and say yeah we've had nights where we gave up 0 7 14 then we've had nights where we gave up 42 49 i mean we've had our good and we've had our bads and i think you know in saying that you got to be humble enough to go back and reevaluate why did that happen both good both both positively yeah. and negatively you know and so yeah, I, I I just I love when guys, offense guys, tweet and they draw out their favorite play or whatever against four three too high. I'm like, yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah. And so that's always my argument is why do you want to be in a four? If, if offensive guys are drawing that, what's that signal to you as a defensive guy? You better be do, doing something different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know there, there are four three guys on here or or who will listen to this who will who will unfollow me on Twitter or tell me I'm crazy. I, I, I get it. Okay. I talked to me about playing four eyes. Okay. I mean, really, I went from playing five, three shape five or learning. I say playing learning and, and how to, how to, how to do that from a, from a great coach, from great coaches. And there were some sleepless nights trying to figure out how to play a four eyes, zero four eye. I mean th- that, you know, one day it just clicked like, okay, that makes sense. But there were some sleepless nights like that. That's not how I believe. That's not how that's supposed to go. What and the hell am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, but eventually it did. Okay. So, no, I, I, I like it. I like it, man. Now we have some questions in chat and coaches. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in chat and you know, you know the deal. I will ask, uh, one coach wants to know, can you go over what crash in box is? Do you know what that means? Okay. Yes. So somebody, well, you guys are glad for punishments, which you guys are right now. Yeah. So I've talked to some guys about what crash and box means. Okay. Um, so crash is our, uh, is our call for corner blitz. Um, you know, lots of people call it Cobra or, or what, you know, whatever your terminology is. It is actually crash. Cobra. Yeah, crash is is our corner blitz. Okay, it's five man pressure week, you know, from the from the boundary or whatever, and you're slanting to the field or slanting strong, right? And so um, we do that against a, against a a one receiver side or against a nub side, against like a trip side. And many times we'll game plan so on a trip, you know, trips nub, right? Um, it's really really good. It's really good against trips nub, and, and, and one of the reasons I. Why? Why did one of the reasons is because um, you're going to take the mic out of conflict, right? So it's again stripping up the mic's out of conflict. So you're bringing your slant in the front, right? The three down lineman. You're bringing the jack underneath. If you want to do it that way, in the corner off the edge. Well, the wheel is going to play the front side B gap. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Or you can set the jack as the nine and bring the corner underneath to kind of exit, right? I like that. Okay. And it kind of depends on how you want to do it. Right. And so like guys, you know, who play lock or stubby or whatever. So you got the corner the Sam, the strong and the mic four over three. 
you can really play heavy four over three because you don't because the wheel's going to play the front side B gap away from the nub, and you got the free safety. Okay, you got the free safety on run game as a bonus fit. Right now, obviously the tight end vertical, he's got to take the tight end. Mm-hmm. Obviously, duh. Right, but if it's run game, you know, now you're fitting. Think about it. You're fitting the three slants, the jack, the corner, the wheel, and the free. Right, and you're you're heavy down. The mic didn't have a gap, didn't have a primary gap because of it. Does that make sense on, on how on how we run how we run crash to nub? And, and I I like it to again I like it to nub. Um, I know some don't. Um, I'm I'm talking to you. I'm sorry. I'm trying to pull. Up. I actually have a clip of this. So I, if I can find it, it's um, fine. Um, so this clicking. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm trying to actually show this so I can I can get there for you. Um, and then box. Yeah. Okay. Box. Box is how is a way we can play bunch. Okay. So people come out. You know, and trip. You know, trips or whatever, and and they they bunch it up. Right. Um, so in saying that, again, I'm trying to find this clip if I can think if I can get to it. Just bear with me here. Uh, uh, so we're playing four over three. Yeah, okay. Here, here. Excuse me. Okay, we'll go back. We'll go back to that. Let me. Can I share my screen? Yes, you can. Oh no, it says you disabled it. Uh, I've never done that before. Host disabled attendee screen sharing. A lot. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Try it. Let's see. Share. Boom. All right. So go back to crash. Okay. So here's, here's crash. Let me show you right quick. All right. So it's trips nub. Let me go back to the wide shot. All right. Trips nub. Okay. So here, here's the deal. Okay. Obviously there are three down linemen. Here's the mic. Okay. Here's the wheel. Okay. Here's our Jack. Now we game plan this. This was a game plan deal. This is our nickel. Okay. So we made a flip call. We can talk about what flip means later. Anyway, so what we did is we went again there to the C A long stick the A right. We backed him off. We backed him off and read the tackle. Talking about the jack. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Notice he's not down the line. Okay. We're bringing him because we're going to read the tackle. If he's down, I'm going to come off his butt. If he's at me, I'm going to come underneath. Talking about the jack. The nickel is the edge player. Okay. Obviously, he's the edge blitzer. Right. Then your corner, so this is our corner. Again, this was a game plan situation. Okay, it's still crash, still edge blitz off the tight end, right? Okay, our corner obviously has the tight end vertical. The wheel now has the B gap to the open side. So I'll, I'll show you all three views here. See, like the so the mic. If you if you watch, oh, sorry, the end zone copy is not any good. Okay, but here's here's kind of the deal. You know, high school kids shooting end zone copies. You know, you get what you get, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, but there's the jack coming in at the tight end. The nickel is off the edge. The corner's looking at the tight end. Right. Again, thirty four is our will. He's gonna play the front side B. Okay. So you'll see the mic. Here's the mic right here. I even wish he was heavier on three. I wish he was really honestly right about here. Okay. He gets there off the snap. You're thinking, coach, why is he? And if you'll watch him on the snap, see those steps? Mm -hmm. That's what we want. He knows he's out of the fit. He knows he doesn't have a gap because we're bringing from the, you know, the boundary of the nut side. Right. And I I can talk crash blitz for 30 minutes, but he was trying to bait it. He was trying to get the cue to think, Hey, there's no one to cover down three. See, I'm upset. Because I want him right here. Yeah, like now, stop playing games, get where yes, line up where yes. you're supposed to be. Yes, I want to take it away pre-snap. Gotcha. Because we're gonna stun it. You know what I'm saying? We're stunting it. We're we're. I mean, you know, he, he wants to lurk and get that pick. That's what yeah. he wants. And he's also smart. This kid. You know how you have those kids who are really smart and figure it out. But those are, those are the best and worst kind. The coach. They're, they're the best and the worst kind because this kid gets it. Look at his first steps out. Yeah. Right. So that's how we would run crash. I mean, unshare it. Stop sharing. So that's how we would run crash okay. uh, to know. Okay. So go back here. I'm going to draw this. By the way, look at that. 
great wife. Uh, Heck yeah, man. So she was, she lets me do this. Uh, yeah. She, she let me have a, have a whiteboard in the house, which is awesome. So, uh, so what we're talking about with Fox okay, is this. Okay. So, you know, trips formation. Can you see that? We good? Yeah, you're yeah. good. You're good. I, I got to wrap my head around how you draw everything backwards. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. So let's say, okay, let's say you stay four eyes. All right. I know you're like, slide the front, you know, get the five shade. Anyway, so what box means, all right, is we're going to play our nickel or our Sam, our nickel Sam, outside leverage of, of the most outside receiver. Okay. The mic is going to be the C gap player. C gap, which would put, you know, obviously, it's just like, it's just like a tackle in a, in a snipper type deal, right, to him. Okay. okay? And the base rule, what's the base rule? you got one, two, three. Your base rule is you're going to apex. Number three. Three in the end, man, right? Okay. Then the corner and the strong, okay, so there's your box. There's your box playing four over three, right? And the way we teach it is with the corner, I'll only back up to the nickel. Okay, he's the first out player, right? Air. He and it's it's banjo. It's like back to our football. Gotcha. Right? So he's the first out. The corner is the first, and here here's how we here's how we teach this. The first deep to corner. Right? So he's gonna play the first post that comes to him or the first corner that comes to him. The strong, okay is the first in deep, right? So he's playing the post too, right? And then the mic, okay, the mic is what we just call the cutter. He's going to play the first cut of whoever, you know, sits there. So, like, again, if you're, you know, you're going to get this, well, the first out would be the back, obviously, mm -hmm. right? Okay? Depending on, again, however you wanted to do it. Well, there's the corner, taking the corner, right? The safety's got the post, and then you run the sit. Well, the mic's got the cut. Okay. And the beautiful thing about playing box this way is let's say that guy's a really, really good player. You can do all sorts of things over there. Okay. And you're still fit and think about it. Mike will in, nose in, jack. Okay. Six, right? Weak side, you can use the free safety at seven because again, you don't have to carry anybody three vertical over here. All right? And you're gonna have an edge set with a nickel. So that's how we how we teach box to a to a bunch set. I hope that's what that guy's talking about. It is. Now we have a question. What do you do when when one of the guys goes? Like so, so let's say they all run their bunch, but they run four verts and a back swing to the, the bunch set. And, and he, I'm not trying to be that guy. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Show me if you got a clip of, of all of all three of these guys running verbalized bunch because of the space, right? Again, I'm not an offense coordinator. I've never called offense, but how they how do they do? Let's that? say they want they wind up where where it would be at a two by two. So you got someone going to the opposite hash, someone on the near hash, and someone on the numbers. Okay, so you got because I have done something. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just say, let's say the outside guy's got the numbers to his side. Okay. That guy's got the hash to his side, and the number three has the hash to the other side. He's running across. All right. So and you have to back out. Something. Yeah. yeah. So the nickel's gonna take the back. Okay. The bite, right. Okay. The corner. Okay. You're strong. It becomes like midpoint. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. That, it does. So yeah. That math's not very good. Gotcha. Okay. Also, here's another thing. Okay, and I drew him like this. That number three is not allowed to go in there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Because, and, you know, he's going to have to do this. Right? And the timing's off. What? And I'm not saying it's not going to be I'm yep. not trying to be that deep, that deep, you know, that defensive coach, right? But it becomes like cover three, you know, midpoint the vertical. Gotcha. Right? Because, again, like I was talking about, if you're using that guy weak, how can you tell him, hey, we're going to use you weak, and you got to play three vertical over here? Yeah, you can't. Or, so you're adjusting, hey, coach, you've got me on that one. Way to go. 
then your adjustment is just, hey, we're still playing box. Now you become the third player too. Okay. If you know, after the after they construct the band off. We just you know become best friends. Yep. Dude, I, I I love that that you were just like, hey, hats off. You actually got got me on that one. You know, and here's the deal. I'm a coach's kid. I, you know, it, it, hey, again, like I said, I've been fortunate enough to give up 0714, and I've also been unfortunate enough to give up 50, right? So I really believe in this day and age of football, you better have some humbleness about you. I agree. You know, because that, that week, you know, week one, you got a shutout. Week two, you're going to give up a bunch of points. I, I mean, and so you got to go back to the drawing board of, hey, we did this really well. Hey, we didn't do that well. Um, but but that's another thing is I don't think you're defeated till the season's over. It, even when the season's over, it's like, okay, we got to go back to the drawing board. Yes. You know, so, like, Christmas break, my wife hates me during Christmas break. And why you is know? that? Are you diving into something new? Yeah, I'm diving into whatever, you know, whether our cut-ups or, or whatever, you know, you know, the black market all 22, whatever is out there. I mean, so. <laughs> yeah. so um, but, I understand that. So, anyway, to answer, I hope I answered those questions you on Friday. I, I appreciate it. We have another one that I saw. Um, all right, Coach wants to know, I'd love to learn how to teach the zero nose to play a lag and have the backer fill off of it. Do you have any tips? Is that something right. you do? Okay, hold on. Let me. Let me... And you already got fans. Coach says, I'm a fan of you. Uh, I've learned so much from you. Thanks, Coach. So high fives, mm-hmm. man. Well, you're a glutton for punishments, what you are. Go find somebody else. <laughs> All right. So I'll get to the tight topic here. All right. Here we go. Now, don't watch the backers in this situation, okay? Because this was a game plan thing. All right. They're not wrong. It's just this is different. All right. Watch the nose, okay? So what we're doing here, watch the nose. What we're telling the nose, we play lag. That's the question, right? Yeah. Okay, lag. Lag is a fancy term that I've learned and stolen, nothing I came up with, that I've stolen from another guy. That means you're going to play backdoor A, right? And that's nothing. People say, you know, oh, you want him to get zoned. Kind of, sort of, not really. Well, Coach, what do you mean, kind of, sort of, not really? What's, what's that mean? Okay, I don't want to let the center off. I don't want him to just, hey, center, you can take off, and I'm not going to grab you and hold you, okay? What lag means for us is we're going to grab the center, Okay, again, watch the nose, not the backers. Grab the center, play into the double. Okay, see how that kid turns turns his hip, his hip, in, in, I mean, literally into the cross of the guard. See this? I'm at this kid right here. Yeah, looks like he's at the club. This, this, this is perfect, okay? And so what we're doing is, again, one, we're in a four-point stance. Okay, nose, and I don't care if he goes right, left, left, right. I don't care what his first two steps are. I don't care. All I worry about is him getting the one-two off the center and feeling the double. Okay, so feel a double of wherever, whatever, and wherever the guard W. So now he feels the double, and that's what we want. All right, let me ask you this. Is this an everyday technique, or is this a call that you – Okay. Every day we do this, okay? And what this does is, again, don't – Okay, now you can watch the backers. We three stacked it this night to two back. That was a game plan deal. Notice because we lag here, this 50 backer back door, because I know their old line coach, no C on Sunday, went, dang, that's a good angle. We can, you know, we can block back there. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, here's what happens when you play lag. Number eight is unblocked. Our mic, our our 50 backer, our mic. See that? Yeah. You're you're taking away the double. Two guys have to block one. Yes. Which so means mathematically end. someone has to be open. So I know the guard, the guard is looking at that 50 backer. I know that. Okay. But because of how the lag is and the center couldn't get off, right? The mic's over the top and there's no one to block it. Close that. Okay. I like that from a defensive perspective. I hate it from an offensive perspective. Okay. Watch this kid right here. So now we're playing a four eye. Okay. Same idea. Now, there's your lag right there, right? And now, if you'll watch this, this uh, yeah, that'd be the wheel. So now you're you're seeing the wheel. He's gonna stack track and fall back. There's nobody to block him because again, they were gonna, however, they were gonna block zone or whatever, right? 
That's how you play lag right there. I bet your linebackers love that technique. <clears throat> yes, they do. That is nice. I like that. And so that kid's good at it. The other one, he's a sophomore, and he's learning how to do it. So if you're watching this kid, love him to death. He got to where he could do it, and he's just a pup at this, at this moment in time. So <laughs> we'll get him there, right? All right, so what kind of drills are you doing in practice to reinforce this technique? You know, you <laughs> Is there a specific drill that you stole or is it just It's yeah, it's something I stole. I mean, something something that again, guys, when it comes to playing with four eyes, okay? I'm telling you, nine percent of it I've stolen, I've borrowed, I've begged, I've found whatever, and the I I try to put my own flavor and spin on it. You know, and I think as coaches, I think we we do that a lot. Yes, we do. Uh, uh, you know, here, these drills are stuff that I've seen and I've stolen and, and um, got clinic tape of or whatever it is. So how do you reinforce it? I mean, seriously, we, you know, you talk about <clears throat> those clinics and those tapes that are out there. Hey, we sit our, with our 16 year kids. Hey, look how they do this. Look how they coach this. Right. And I think, you know, whether you're at OU, Texas, Arkansas, LSU, whatever, I think teaching is teaching and coaching is coaching. I mean, I don't care if I've got the five-star D1 nose or the 16-year-old kid nose. You know, I mean, I know DNA is DNA. I understand that. Okay, but coaching is the same. Okay, so we're going to take the film that I've learned, study, and believe in and implement it in our drips. Okay. I like that. And uh, Coach Johnny says it's like a rub route for the D-line. You know, I never thought of it that way, but yeah, you can say that. All right, we got another question. Uh, do you ever tilt the D line? Why or why not? And what are the advantages of disadvantage? Because that's a good question. Because we have when teams we play, they sometimes they have four eyes, but they cock them. Yeah. So okay, here, here's here's my belief on on tilting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, this is my belief, and there's probably nine percent of America who doesn't believe this. So, just go with me here. I believe when you tilt, talking about interior wise, like a shade tilt, right? It's yeah. Tilt shade. Okay. I I believe that a lot of times it's very very easy for that guard to block him down, and it washes off the back door. Talking about like a zone scheme. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I get it. You're gonna kill it front side. If they're running zone like front side. Hey, I'm all about it. But in my estimation, the way I've seen it done, people run so much downhill, you know, downhill, like what we call zier. So it's zone, re, you know, it's yeah. zone re veer, yeah. right? And okay, people always run zone. Like, okay, hey, it's right. We're going to go left to left B gap. No. So what happens is when we tilt it, it becomes like a wash and the nose is put in lane four of the track. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. That's my estimation. I'm not saying that is correct. Right. And then like for the center, so let's say that, that you're blocking the tilt shade. Right. Okay. Number one, you know where he's at. He's in the A gap. And again, disclaimer for the fourth time, we play a shade. Okay. We play a shade. It's tip to tip, old school, you know, squared up stance. Right. So my deal is I think when you're playing tilt and you're getting base block, I think it's really, really easy for that kid to base block you because you're already face to, you're going to be face to face with you. That's my opinion. If somebody wants to talk me out of it. I'm all ears. Okay. All right. Now let's go a little bit into game planning. You come in Sunday. What are two things you're looking for from the offense? Like what are you come in? You've got, I know you've got a set and everything, but what are the, what are the two main things you're looking at right out the gate? Okay. Number one, what are the top 15 plays? Meaning, um, w when, I, when I say that, what are their five favorite formations and three plays out of each? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, here we go. I actually have this here. Is it okay? If I keep sharing. Is that okay? Man, I'm not going to tell you no. <laughs> here you go. So you said two. They're in my top seven. Look at that, going above and beyond the question. That's why you're a great defensive coordinator. Well, again, I've, I've been fortunate to be around good people, good coaches, good kids, and then, you know, you got your good years, you got your bad years. So, uh, yeah. I and just, didn't, you didn't even let me finish that sentence before you were you were being humble. Look at that. Man, you got all the bases covered. High fives. 
I, I also I've been humbled by my dad numerous times too. <laughs> I so. hey from one coach's kid to the next, I completely understand. So anyway, you talk about the top two. Here are our top two. What do they do most? Okay, the top fifteen plays, right? Uh, the five favorite formations, three plays out of each. And I don't care. So let's say their favorite, their favorite formation is trips. Uh -huh. right? Okay. I don't care if it's three passes to zero runs. Don't care. I don't care if you, three runs to zero passes. Don't care. I'm going to break down. We're going to scheme those favorite three plays out of trips. And here's what we have to stop, period. Right? Okay. And so, you know, and let's say their number two formation, you know, pro twin, pro to one side, twin to the other, right? 11 personnel. Okay. They may have two favorite runs and then one favorite pass, right? Or or three favorite runs and zero pass. Well, that gets my mind going. Okay, when they get in this formation, we need to load the box and play a cover three aspect. You know what I'm saying? Get one more hat in the box, and then two personnel, right? Do they when they do get in the tight end? Do they bring him in and take somebody out? Okay. Oh, uh, and then when it goes to personnel, who's the dude, right? Okay, when he's and that's the deal. Like when guys put the dude at one place, thank you very much. When he's at one place on the field and, he, and you don't move him, I'm not saying you made life easy, but you made it easier. Okay. So the top two, I guess you'd say, are these two right here. And then obviously there's three, four, five, six, seven. Um, but that's when, you know, so the game's up. You know, we just play Friday night. We've done all the breakdown. So it's Saturday at, I don't know, 11 noon, whatever it is, right? Now we're moving on to the next opponent. Now, I've already looked at the next opponent on about Thursday and kind of got an idea. I've looked at him Friday. You know, so we're playing a game, uh -huh. right? But I'm looking at the next opponent Friday morning, Friday afternoon. And why is that? Because you feel comfortable with, with this yeah. outline? Because because I don't want to find – because on Friday, and I'm a firm believer in this, Friday I don't watch our opponent again. So I put it away Thursday, 11, at, you know, whatever, 10 o'clock, whatever it is, right? Nice. Friday, Friday is all about the next, preparing for the next opponent. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to tell your kids at lunch time, hey, we need to do this instead. You worked all four days, you know, so Friday, it's done. It's, it's over. I'm not watching any, I'm not watching one second of their, of our, that night opponent. Because I know I'll find something that I missed. That is, okay? I, I like that. And so the Friday, I say devoted, Friday morning and Friday afternoon, you know, there's always that wall, right? The after school to kick off, there's always that, what do you do for an hour, an hour and a half, you know? And so I'll, you know, slowly, very slowly jog on the treadmill for 20 minutes, you know, and, and you know, have, have the iPad out in front of me of the next opponent or whatever, you know, just watch them all first down or whatever it may be. Um, so that's kind of uh, what I – what I believe in um, when it comes to, to Saturday and Sunday game prep. I know that was long winded. No, no, no. Uh, what is, do you treat, so let's go to personnel. Let's say I am two by two spread and then also have two by two with the hand down tight end, but we run the same plays. In your mind, is that two different format? Like, are you scheming for the two different format? Like, I can run two by two spread stick and I can run with the same thing with two by two, same personnel with that that hand down tight end and still run stick. Are you treating that separate or is you just lumping those together? Yeah. So like, that's another thing. Like every week, every week we're always going to have auto calls. Okay. We're always going to have auto formation calls, you know, and we tell our kids, look, they keep the same 11 dudes on the field, but they get 47 different formations. Yes. So let's not, if I call auto, I say auto, that means automatic. Now I still call our front center blitzes, but if I call auto and they come out in two by two, we're doing this. If I call auto and they come out pro twin, we do that. So we've repped Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of auto to two by – or I said two by two. To twins right, twins left means this. Uh -huh. Auto to twins over here, pro flanker, right, pro, is this. Okay. Right? Because I know you, I've scouted you and game planned you, that I still have all the arsenal. I mean, and, I, and our kids know this. It goes, look, guys, we can call anything at any time we want to. Our base spring, summer, fall camp install is still there, right? So if I call blitz, we better run blitz. When we call auto, auto means formation. I come on this formation, get in that front, get in that coverage, go. Okay. Now, I, I'm glad you brought that up. What is the 
coronation changing things for you since you don't have spring? And I know y'all are fixing to go back, what, next week or in two weeks in June? Like, so, have you have you modified your install or, or anything? Or is it just the kids have been in it for a year? They should know what, what's going on. Well, so that's the, you know, our kids have been in it for a year. Like, you know, and again, it's, it's, you know, sometimes when you install an offensive defense, it takes longer than a year. You know? yeah. But we are fortunate enough that, that uh, you know, after Christmas, you know, in January, we, I mean, we put all, everything away. It was weights and lifting and running. That's what we did. And then about February, um, we kind of did a few, you know, a few, in, I say install, I mean, it's like, okay, guys, look, here's our one front, here's our one coverage. Let's get to do that for 45 minutes. Boom. Um, and, but, you know, when it came to install, we were, you know, doing Zoom stuff like everybody else in America is. Yeah. We're going through our day one, our day two, our day three, review day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, review day four, day five, day six. Okay. Right. And so, and then, you know, there's always that, you know, they can mainly do it, but can they physically, you know, and that's obviously what everybody's missing. Yeah. Obviously, you know, obviously coast to coast, but it's like, um, we've been doing that for gosh, however long, you know, and, and I'm kind of hurt right now because today was supposed to be our spring game. So in Texas, we're, we're going to get 18 days of spring ball mm -hmm. and today was going to be our spring game. And so I've not really been fun to be around the house today. Um, uh, kind of had that pity party, but, um, you know, and lucky again, being being here a year, our kids kind of get the grasp, the grasp, and the aspect, and concepts of this means this, and that means yeah. that. So um, we're not doing anything that's over the top. It's like you know, speaking some foreign language, but we're doing stuff that they should know, and we're reviewing it and just beating it down to. And our and that's the deal. Sometimes I can tell when our kids are more like, yes, coach, we've gone over this forty-seven times. Well, so, buckle in because we're going over it forty-eight. Yeah, exactly. No doubt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Coach wants to know. He saw a big stack of books, and he's wondering what your favorite book is. Are you an avid? Are you an avid reader? Well, first off, so that stack of books right there, okay, is where you know when I was drawing on the board, right? Uh -huh. um, that's that's kind of my so you can see me kind of face level a little bit. Man, one of my favorite books. Um, gosh, first off, I'm a history nerd. Like our DVR our wife, she's gonna kill me because our DVR is filled with just history nerd stuff. Um, one of my favorite books is a Geronimo book that, that Mike Leach wrote, uh, our kind of forward, you yeah. know, uh, oh gosh, I don't know when it came out five, six, seven years ago. I know what you're read talking that, about. The leadership book. Um, you know, guys, and I know coaches, you are going to laugh at me when I say this. Okay. Um, it's not a coach book. It's not a wild at heart by John Eldridge. What is that? I've never heard of that. Okay. So it talks about, again, don't make fun of me. So don't, it talks about capturing a man. So it talks about like, guys, we need wild, you know, like we need adventure. We need, mm -hmm. we need challenges. You know, a man is not set, a, a normal regular man is not satisfied if he has no challenges. Like he has to have something that, that challenges him, that makes him upset, that makes him happy, that makes him depressed. That make, I mean, those are all these emotions and that something's, you know, this is preparing you for something that's 10 years down the road. That this heartache right now that you're going through is preparing you for 10 years down the road, or the success you're having is, you know, and that again, my dad's home me, but that's one of those books that will humble, humble you. Is like, okay, you're having success now, tomorrow something's going to happen to you, it's going to change your world, yeah, whether it be for the better, or for the worse. So, read it, you know, again, I love drama book, uh, uh, Wild at Heart, I love that book. Um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, so I'm, I'm Native American, I'm Choctaw Indian, um, from Oklahoma, my. And so I love reading about Native American history, Native, just Native American peoples in general. Um, so I don't want to say I'm an avid reader, but I, I'll, I'll crack it open. Okay. Um, so are you I'm more of a, of a, of a favorites, but those are probably my, my favorites. Anything that can catch my attention. Are you more of a, of a real book or a Kindle type of guy? Oh, real book. Okay. It, that's, that's, I don't know. I don't, somebody I was talking to a long time ago. Cause oh, my mom, my mom asked me, she goes, you know, would you want a Kindle? I'm like, no, like, you know, you see like all these guys are like bookcases of like book and I don't yeah. have that by any means. Okay. But, uh, I like the hard, I don't know why I just like the hard copy. Just something like, about having it in your hand and, about having the yeah. book. And, and like, you know, I, I will highlight that, you know, again, I, I don't read every night or every, I, I don't. Okay. But I just, um, 
that I did something I had in your hand and saying, Ooh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Highlight. Yeah. I, I completely understand. I do well, use I, a Kindle, but I do it as a, okay, I want to try this book because it's a lot cheaper. If I like the book, I'm going to buy the hard copy. One, one of my favorites. Yeah, I've read that. Okay. And I've read this numerous times because sometimes you just need it. Yeah. You know, um, but, uh, you know, I, I, books, and that's, that's another thing. It's like, I, I'll sit on the bus, you know, we'll be on somewhere and, I'll crack open the book and read a chapter or whatever. You can read on the bus? Coach, here, here's the deal. I'm, I'm kind of. That's you know, impressive, man. Uh, and that's from, from the hours of about 3 to 6.30. I mean, really, school's out. I'm, hey, I'm pretty chill. I mean, that's the deal. I mean, what, what else can I do? You know? What, what else? We, I mean, nothing we can do. Now, 6.59, okay, I become pretty wired. <laughs> so. All right. Well, we've got one more question before we we go. Um, how would you attack a heavy spread up tempo team, and you can't bring corner pressure? Like, what's your philosophy? Let, forget that last part. You're going up against a, a hurry up, no huddle type of offense. What are you thinking? Does anything change with that checklist you showed us, or are you doing something a little bit different? Yeah. So, you know, we're. It, it, Here's here's something else. Okay, those up tempos, you got to do something to get them behind the chains. Okay, you got. And I say blitz it. Okay, I didn't say bring you know everybody and play zero. It's not what I said. Okay, but you got to do something that gets them behind the chains. And here's the deal with up tempo. And I played those guys. They're gonna get you some. You might as well just say, hey, if, if I've given up only 17 and a half, and I know it sounds terrible, guys. That's another thing. Your whole goal so much. Your whole goal board to say you know we gave up less than 21. Again, the offense we see are the exactly the spread up tempo RPO the crap out of you and take deep shots. Okay, mm-hmm. and so we don't like I said we don't see the dead T twenty two personnel double you know double tight eye stuff. We we don't see that. It's not six you know three yards in a cloud of dust. So you know, I'm say coach, if you're you're having given up seventeen at half, I'm like, how many possessions are you going to play? How many possessions? You, and that's the deal. You can't just say well points per game. It's, you know, points per possession. So in saying that, how are you going to attack it? you got to be able to bring four and five or six and get them behind the sticks. Are they going to hit a big one? Yeah, you might as well just swallow that, that pill and that pride and say it's going to happen, okay? And, and, but also, you got to get them off rhythm. you got to get them off target. you got to make the kids scramble. You know, because what, what are the things that up-tempo, no huddle teams hate? They hate when the clock stop. Yeah. They hate when you have to readjust, okay? And so – how what my thinking on that? I'm gonna say we're blitz heavy, but we might pressure a little bit more, knowing how you're gonna hit one, but we're gonna hit one too. And you're gonna be second, and thirteen. You're behind the chains, and you know, or or you had to throw it out of bounds. I'm second ten. Clock stopped. Yeah. So that's kind of I say my philosophy. That's that's kind of um, how I believe about those up tempo, empty three by two, three by one deals you know and a lot of it comes into auto stuff you know hey if i go auto formation boom we're doing this auto blitz boom we're doing that and so because that, that's another thing it's like do we really want our kids looking over and i've got a, a three-word call you know i mean that's that's yeah and, sometimes, and we've done that we've not here i did this when i was at norman north we had a team that they scripted the first 10 plays and i knew it and, and the guy talked about it clinic and their first 10 plays, they ran it on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and probably Friday morning and game day, right? So their kids knew it. And they were all wristbanding, so coach held up one, two, I mean, okay. And so we didn't script it, but I said, listen, don't even look at me for the first 10 plays. We're playing base defense. Here it is. Boom, go. And and um, we got we to stop after sixth play, seventh play, whatever it was, and it was the – it was the fastest minute and a half ever, you know, but it, it, it was also, we stopped them because we brought enough, you know, we brought enough pressure that got them behind the sticks or, or whatever it was. Um, so anyway, that I, I don't think I'm not so but that's kind of my idea about those heavy up tempo spread ideas. Okay. I like it. I, I, I don't, I don't know what there's 30 on here. I don't know who some of you are. Um, 
you've got other questions, guys. I, I, I don't have, I mean, I don't, I don't have all the answers. Um, you know, hit me up with some more. I, I know coach's probably got to go, but I've got the kid in bed. And so we're, you know, uh, my Twitter's at coach Gower, all one word, follow me there. I dropped it in the chat. Awesome. There you go. And, uh, I appreciate you coming on, man. That yeah. I know we've yeah. tried to do this like two or three different times throughout the year and we just couldn't get our schedule connected. And I will yeah. say that's the one good thing about the coronation. It's now everyone's, we, we have, we're kind of on the same schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I, I've heard lots of good things about you and doing this, you know, it's an hour or whatever out. And that's the deal. And here's another thing with me is, say, coach, we're going for an hour. No, that usually means that we're going an hour and a half. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but anyway, it, it, like I said, we're at Coach Gower. You want to DM me? I, you know, I see um, drop and why. Oh no, Johnny M. We are we are a spot. Uh, well, excuse me. We are a, a zone match quarters principle. Okay, we play that much a man match. Okay, and a whole lot of, of zone match cover four ideas. Okay, there you go. That question. All right, and. Uh... Coaches, don't go anywhere because I'm about to – I will put up the be right back. And then I don't know if you know this. Dude, I – since we don't have football, I'm jonesing for it so bad. I'm in like four different Madden franchise leagues with co- coaches across the country. Like I'm a, I'm full-fledged addicted until we can get back and actually play. I'm in there with uh, – Kadooty's just as bad as me, man. Oh, geez. There's, there's- he, he, he is in like six of them. The man can't get enough of it. Um, sorry, John. I'm going through this too, Coach. That's safeties, fine. Safeties and run fits depends upon what the formation is. I mean, to be honest, it depends on what the coverage is. You know, are we playing quarters? No. So, but if, going back, if it's 10 personnel, right, safeties aren't going to run fits, right? We use a free safety as a bonus player, right? But if it's if it's 11 or it's three, three down guard tackle tight end, obviously three-man surface, and yeah, we can, we'll use our, our free safety as, as the – see yeah player playing his four eyes so um again if you want to get into all that we can yeah see here's nothing coach i haven't hopped on the sticks probably since college so i i don't have any xbox playstation i i don't have any of that i i didn't have one for about four years and then i i i knew this was going to happen because i'm weird i read i'm a big reader as well and in seventh grade we read we had to read the hot zone i don't know if you know what that is hot zone it's about ebola i had to read it for my science class and it just it messed me up mentally so like now i'm always on the lookout for for infectious diseases like pandemics and stuff like that so i i knew about this disease back in january as weird as that sounds i'm kind of coming out like mel gibson in the uh conspiracy theory thing and i was like i know something's gonna happen I need to get an Xbox just in case we get locked down because in China, you know, they locked down like a whole New York city type deal. And I did not want to be locked in the house with my four and two year old and not have a system. Cause my thought was, Hey, if we're stuck and I can't take them anywhere, I can at least turn on a video game, put on like a, a Minecraft or something and have my daughter just, you know, zone out for a little bit and give daddy just a, a little break. Yeah. And then that spiraled yeah. into, oh, I can get Madden. Oh, there's other coaches that are the same. And then that's just See, what that, happened. That's that's what I'm afraid would happen to me. So <laughs> I just I just try I try to steer clear of it. I really do. You know, I I just yeah. If I if I if I was single, dang right. Yeah. You, we would yes, but. I don't know. Just right now is not the best time for. I, I can play, and I, I don't. Yeah, I don't play it until every everyone is asleep now. So I'm like, okay, I can do this. But yeah, it's like I'm a recovering heroin addict, and I decided to put the needle right on the counter, and go. Ah, I'm just a little taste, and now I'm full fledged addicted again. Because the crazy thing is, it's like riding a bike, though. Like I can just pick because in college, what we I guarantee you all every coach either play two games. Um, NCAA football or yeah. Madden. Those are the only two things that they did, and that's we went to class and then See, came back and played. I can remember I was a junior or senior, and Call of Duty had just come out. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so we were, you know, and then you know, coaches ask us, you know, six a.m. workout. Why are y'all dragging? Well, coach, we haven't slept. All right, so what do you, I mean, what do you want me to tell you? 
Uh, yeah, mine was a Halo. I was more of a Halo person. Yeah, yeah. Play, played some Halo. Wasn't you know? And my kids today, unfortunately, don't understand. Remember the Super the Super Nintendo, right? Heck there was yeah. four buttons. There was A, B, and X, Y, or, y, or whatever it was, and then there was directional. Yep. That's all there was. That's all there was. And Madden was the Madden '96 to '95 was one of the best games. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm getting now. We're just spitballing and other things. Since I've been in this Madden thing and doing it, which I have a game I have to get to, um, I was able to talk to the lead designer of Madden. I got him on. Clint, uh, I'm forgetting his last name right now, played in the NFL for eight years. He now is the lead designer for Madden. Dude, the the toxicity, I can't even say it, of this community. They're like, oh, this he's garbage, he's awful, he's everything. And I'm like, okay, do you not remember like 96 where it's, three boxes on the top and you had no idea who to throw it to and you're just picking a button and hoping to, now we can run RPOs. We can run like, you know, match coverage and all of this stuff. Why are y'all bitching? This is amazing right now. Amazing. Yep. Yeah. So that's yep. my soapbox. Yep. That's right. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. I, I need to get you back on and talk about more defensive stuff. Cause I, I need to get more defensive coaches on two reasons. One, because you're a lot smarter than I am. And two, it's like I'm spying on you. I love it. Well, you know, again, guys, I don't know how many guys are on here right now, but, you know, whether you've been a coordinator or you are or you want to be or whatever, you know, and I've never been a head coach, okay? I'm not, but one day I want to be. That day's not today and that day's not tomorrow. You know, I'm enjoying coaching one side of the football. And like, you know, listen to our offense, you know, listen to, um, you know, the other day, I'll give you an example. You know, we were fortunate enough to get with Coach Flood, the old line coach at Alabama, you know, and I'm sitting there. And, and so uh, listen to their thought process about, the, you know, the, the light side of the football, right? Um, <laughs> so it's just, you know, again, you got to be humble, you know, and, and again, there, there are those times, guys, that you feel good on Friday night and then, you look at film on next Saturday and go, Oh, we should have given up a big one here. Yeah. We should have given up a big one there, you know? And so, um, like I said, I don't have all the, I, I found a few answers and a lot more that don't work. <laughs> right. Um, but anyway, like I said, y'all want to, y'all want to get at me. Um, uh, are your box rules the same for a wide bunch? Four wide. Sorry, I'm looking at the. Are your box rules the same four wide bunch? I'm trying to think of what he's talking about. It probably, if it's a four, if it's, do you still run box? Actually, I don't know. If if it's quads bunch, I don't know. Hold on. I think he means for wide bunch. Oh yeah, so if it was strips. I'm assuming. Sorry, I know you probably got to go. Yeah, so like, okay. So if it was the same deal, right, you could still play box to it. Okay. Right? Or, or, I know you're probably, re- this is a bad idea by you bringing me on. So I can do this all <laughs> Or, another way you can do it. Okay, so you, you got them wide out here, right? Again, so we, we could do, like I said, nickel, Mike, corner, strong. So, again, there's your box. Right? Okay. Or, or, okay, let's say what we call triangle. All right, so you got box, you got triangle. Okay, so your mic's still going to be there. Okay, corner, strong. There's your triangle. Right. So you could do one or two things. Obviously, you could point him and play in out on one and three. Or you bang him and he's a buzzer. He's a flat player. It's kind of, it's like covered. It's like quarters buzz. And then obviously, there's your wall three player with the mic. So there's, there's three ways you can do it box it, triangle point, or triangle just, you know, like buzz, like quarters buzz. Okay. All right, there you go. So, 
anyway, like I said, Coach, I know you probably got to go. This is this is your first time with me, so. And I, the, the first of many. That's what I'm going to say. This is going to be the first of many, man. Okay. Uh, just holler at me and we can get something going. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, guys, again, at Coach Gower, DM me if you've got questions or a better way to do things. Because, um, again, I'm, I'm in search of the answers because I don't have very many. Um, but holler at me and, and we can get some stuff going. All right, and coaches, don't go anywhere because in a minute, bathroom break, and I'm, I'm back on my franchise. So I will be right back. 